we've interviewed all the Kickstarter backers. We've interviewed disgruntled uh, veterans. have expressed their frustration. The Kickstarters talk about different direction in the game. But with the looming release, let's have a look at the entire early access period and what ultimately has become the hell let loose that we're going to be entering uh, with update 10. Uh, this is episode 15 of Hell Let's Talk. And welcome back to Hell Let's Talk. We had a little time off, and no, it wasn't because uh, Digi Shadow suddenly vaporized. Uh, Digi's actually out uh, fighting some uh, wildfires uh, right now, supporting that effort over on the West Coast. We wish him nothing but the best, but filling his spot, uh, Johnny Gunner. Welcome, Johnny. Hey, what's going on, Inchon? Yeah, and uh, it now, now, you know, been, been a regular on the show with your historic uh, comments or segments and giving us those ted uh tidbits of information now you're here for a full episode absolutely looking forward to it yep and i i, th I think you actually got a, a little bit of a explosive situation happening <laughs> yeah. yeah i uh ju just today picked up a uh almost 30 pound 105 millimeter uh don't don't actually even know what it is i'm not gonna lie i bought <laughs> just... this thing i thought it looked cool and i'm trying to figure out what it is in the background right now so yeah that's uh that's 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 uh, <laughs> a, a, a developing cool. situation paperweights i i have that so <laughs> 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 yep. But uh anyway, yep, we skipped the July 4th show. We're back on this one, back onto our regular schedule, even though this is actually a later recording. Um and uh Johnny, uh I've I've got my um bullet rye whiskey here. I understand you got a little something special also. Yeah, I got some uh, some rum and coke. We're just gonna call it that because I don't gonna wanna call yeah, we're just gonna call it that and leave it. I don't. I don't want to go into the specifics. So. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, let's go ahead and give a toast to the, the Digi and everybody out there uh, fighting the wildfires. Cheers. Cheers to you guys. To Digi and your magnificent beard. You know, it's funny when I when I shaved my beard, uh, all of a sudden, like the comments were like, "You got rid of the beard. You look like a baby and whatnot." Um, but anyway, uh, since we've been gone. Uh, well, about a whole month, there was a lot of dev briefs, a lot of news came out. Uh, we're not going to talk about every single one of them. We really want to get to our main segment of looking at kind of like a time capsule review of the uh, early access period. But there's things we got to talk about in the news, got to talk about them. And one of the first ones was really the, uh, the TAC maps uh, that came out for all three of these. Uh, Johnny? What, what, what you got here? Yeah, we got Stalingrad Curse and St. Mary Dumont. As you guys know, St. Mary Dumont has been completely re reworked. It will not be the same going forward. Correct. Have you been able to get any time over on the PTE at all with the new maps? <laughs> Mainly the Russian front maps. I haven't had a chance to get onto St. Mary Dumont, so that one's going to be a 100% surprise for me. And I think that's great when it comes to new content. I want to be surprised a little bit. Yeah, but I know we know Max has kind of been on the, with all the PTs. Mm -hmm. They've been trying to control the information, yeah. you know, trying to build that excitement. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a few things that when I kind of review these uh, uh, highlights here of these TAC maps, right now up on your screen is Kursk, and you see that a lot of these midpoints, especially the second and fourth sectors, are right in the middle. Mm -hmm. You don't have these huge uh, uh, advantages uh, to either side. Now, granted, the midpoints are still more centered. Uh, after talking to a few uh, Black Matter individuals, they said that is a conscious decision they're making. Kursk does it well. Uh, we're going to flip over here to Stalingrad. You see Stalingrad once again. Those middle points actually line up a little bit more. Second and fourth points a little bit more kind of towards the back. And then, But what we see is a theme is all the headquarters sector points are pushed more forward. So that way that 10-second spawn isn't just overwhelming that strong point. I think that's okay. But, I mean, if you really want to see probably the best balance of all strong points, it's right up there in St. Marie Dumont, mm -hmm. with the only exception being the actual city fighting, uh, which pulls a little bit down to that bottom right. Uh, Johnny, I, I, I can't tell you, I I'm looking forward to St. Marie Dumont because that top left corner, Winter's Landing, going all the way through, it's going to be episode two of Band of Brothers Absolutely. that we just get to follow through. I'm looking forward to it. 
Yeah, I'm I'm mainly glad that they're actually making the city of Saint Marie Dumont a viable point because I don't know about you, but hardly ever do I actually end up fighting in the city itself. It's always in the outskirts. Correct, correct. Because it's not a point. I mean, it's between yeah. two points, you know, type exactly. deal. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, now, your experience over on the PT, have you noticed anything to kind of uh, different as far as as compares to current maps? Um, I will say that there's uh, there's a lot more open ground in some of the maps. Like I said, mainly I've played on Stalingrad and Kursk, and even in Stalingrad, I've had people mention how the streets are very open and wide, which is allowing for that tank warfare that the uh, mods definitely want to get in there. But Kursk is uh, it's an extremely open map, which I think is a good change of pace, honestly, because Russia was pretty flat and open if you've ever been there so. <laughs> i have i haven't but they they did a good job while it is mm -hmm. flat and open there's a lot of kind of micro coverage trench exactly. systems um I'll, I'll give a shout out if you haven't seen uh mono Especiales, friend of the show mm -hmm. his interview with max max talks about how they're trying to get to where you don't have these wide open fields like yeah. foy and the old saint marie de mont about 50 meters, you're going to be able to get in some coverage. Mm -hmm. Granted, there's some parts on Kursk where you're just kind of like running yeah. to knee high. And you're like, I sure hope no one sees me. But right. I'm dead. <laughs> yeah, I absolutely love the trench warfare. I think it's fantastic. And it's totally different than anything we've seen on Hell at Loose so far. And I think Correct. we really needed that. I, 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 my, my, the only trench right now, the warfare that I think I love is on, actually on St. Marie Dumont, is that mm -hmm. uh, the battery between Bradcourt Batter yeah. and the battery, the that that line in the trench just i love it i'm gonna look yeah. forward to curse get more of that trench warfare really uh really looking forward to it but the tac maps Absolutely. are out for all the competitive players for all the people that are looking to just kind of decide what the you know the next strategy the the the, the minor points not the strong points but the points that require you to hold in order to get the strong point it's going to be open field day for all three of these maps absolutely um, so but uh that wasn't the only news what else do we have here johnny yeah, it looks like uh, we're going to have significantly less open fields, uh, which you kind of went over a little bit. And then we've got the armor overhaul, which uh, interesting, very interesting, um, to say the least. I'm I'm excited for it being a tanker myself, but um, I've got I think there's good and bad with it. But I think overall it's good. I think I think it's good for the well, most part. Needless to say, tank, tanks, uh, tankers have been neglected mm -hmm. and we're Absolutely. uh you know, basically, as an infantryman, and this is good that mm -hmm. you're a tanker, we're going to later on have a full-on tanking episode with some mm -hmm. of the premier uh, tank members in the community. Uh, mm -hmm. But the only thing I want from my tank is just to make sure they don't have tanks. That's basically Absolutely. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, but uh, anyway, there's been a lot of testing on the PTE with these. Uh, and I, one thing I'll say, at least from tanks, the, you know, the modular damage, mm -hmm. ability to actually immobilize a tank but that mm -hmm. tank still be able to have full combat efficiency as far as the weapons go. I think that's going to be interesting. Uh, one big thing that came out and said the direction of what they're looking to do is have a less prevalence of heavy tanks. A yes. game, the tiger is going to be something rare to see yes. on the battlefield and more medium tanks uh, to come out there. You know, eventually mm -hmm. the Panzer fours, but right now be the Panthers, the mm -hmm. Shermans, not so many, the 76s and, uh, mm -hmm. Tigers, which we'll talk a little bit later when the 76 came out and kind of how that, sh you know, shook the foundation a little bit of asymmetrical mm -hmm. balance. Um, yeah, absolutely. But Johnny, you, you talked about there's something that's just, it's just nails on the chalkboard for you on these this, the, these tanks, the, so specifically the, the Russian IS1, tanks. The IS-1, man. I, I don't know why they put it in the game. I really don't. I don't get it. Um, it's a beautiful tank. It, it is, but... <sighs> From a historian's perspective, there were so much better vehicles they could have put in. The T-3485 was a better version of the IS-1, and they were actually at Kursk, and yet they put the IS-1 at... The, the IS-1 was not at Kursk. It was not at Stalingrad either. So I, I'm looking forward. That means that I believe we are owed some more late war Russian front maps, <laughs> which I, I'm, I'm holding the devs to that then. So, you know, I, I would like to see some more late war, um, as well well as early war honestly if, if half tracks so. come out and the russians get like a bmp i'm gonna be blaming you <laughs> <laughs> i wouldn't go that far so <laughs> but, but yeah uh, i i think overall the armor was done very well i'm i'm yeah. i'm pretty uh pretty happy with it so far 
So but look, I mean, look, look at that image up there. The, that, that IS is a beautiful it, tank. It is beautiful, but the T-3485 is so much better. It's so much better. Well, we elaborate a little bit on that. Like you said, so, it's better in what aspect? So so essentially, basically, uh, to, to go really quick through it, there were two different companies that were making Russian tanks. There, there was the group that was making the T-34s, and uh, then there was the group that was making the KV series, uh, the KV-1, the KV-2, uh, KV-85, etc. Uh, it was a lot like thinking of a Porsche versus Maybach uh, during World War II for the Germans. You know, you had the certain types of like Porsche Tiger tanks, and then you had regular Tigers that we see in Saving Private Ryan, Band of Brothers, and every other damn World War II movie out there um <laughs> the iconic tiger the iconic either. hollywood we're, tiger yeah we're, we're not going into the tigers i don't want to talk about it uh, <laughs> the one the one time i will accept there being tiger tanks is at curse because there were 256 of them i looked the number up don't that's it that's all i want to talk about tigers um but no the uh kv the kv1 they took that tank's chassis and threw a t-3485 turret on the on the is one and they realized that it was still too slow too bulky so they actually took the t-34 and they slapped a t-3485 turret on it which had that super powerful 85 millimeter gun that the russians gotcha. just fell in love with uh that could actually penetrate german armor for once so while the is one is viable as a tank that can combat panthers and tigers it is not historically accurate at all for Spreading, Kurs and Stalingrad. spreading markism and uh, 85 millimeters at a time, right? Yes, exactly. Marxism? Marxism? Okay. Marxism. Yeah, 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 yeah. But and then and then finally, you know, they also introduced the uh, BA10, and I have to admit, mm -hmm. dude, I love the look. I love the model they did on oh, this BA10. Cool. They're Russians have always had cool armored cars, even if they're absolutely useless. Which I mean, they said <laughs> on their Twitter post is, hey, it doesn't have armor, but it looks cool as shit. One hundred percent agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so that that's the tanks uh, coming through. We got up there. They they hit boxes, a lot of different mm -hmm. things. Um, like I said, we're going to be getting into armor later. Uh, I think for everything right now, we really got to get the tankers in there. Uh, yeah. They've had plenty of PTEs. I think we pretty much know what they're going to have, but you don't know until you finally get there. Yep. Um, and talking about what you don't know until you finally get there, mm -hmm. uh, the OP changes. Oh my yeah. gosh! Talk about everything that the community yeah, just got up in arms uh... about. Yeah, uh, I I like how small they are. I'm not gonna lie, I really like that. Okay, uh, so it, it's so they reduce the size. Mm -hmm. Check. What else did they do yeah. with it, Johnny? Yeah, they made it shiny. Uh, that one I'm not so hot on. Um, <laughs> I like the sound. Don't get me wrong. It makes a little radio static. I yep. think that's really cool. I like that because I think of hedgerow fighting where you're on the other side of the hedgerow and you have no idea it's there and you just walk up next to it and poof you've knocked out an op it's like okay but there's no it's like it's, it's like a little gem you just find like, yeah, oh i didn't it, expect to do cool. this <laughs> i would rather be in a situation where i'm in a field and i can hear radio communication and footsteps and then i go into hunter mode i think yep. that's i think that's awesome honestly I, I'm, I'm waiting for the call out of shut up shut up shut up shut, shut. i hear something i hear something yeah, shut, I hear shut, shut up shut up <laughs> Well, you know, it's yeah, funny because the last the last PTE is on a train. <laughs> yeah, last PTE I was in, I actually came across an American one, and mm -hmm. I like I just like wound up like st standing there for like a minute just listening to it, and it was good radio chatter. And then That's you cool. know, obviously they got the German voices, they got the Russian yep. Russian voices. Um, so I think the sounds. I mean, Johnny, sounds are good. Smaller. Love the sound fantastic yeah I, I like how it's smaller it makes it more viable honestly um i personally have never liked the ops or garrisons being a table that you set up with a bunch of spam crates potatoes and a <laughs> monocular thing that wasn't even used for most of the war i we're not gonna talk about that but uh you know, I, I think it's cool that they've compressed it down significantly and I like that they've done the vocalizations but the it, it the shininess just why <laughs> well let's let's first off start about so back in update nine the pte they actually had mm -hmm. to where ops got locked in the pte if somewhere was nearby much like garrison's got locked yep. and the feedback was intense on that and they it didn't mad. make it in to uh <laughs> update nine obviously we, yeah. we've seen that uh the feedback from the these current pts and credit credit to black matter for running multiple pts in fact they were recording Thank this you. they just ran i think pte eight if i remember correctly mm -hmm. yeah um, I think so. but i can see where the you know like the community is basically like just don't stop messing with spawns just yeah. <laughs> like leave yeah. leave britney alone <laughs> leave ops alone <laughs> like, exactly yeah and i 
I can see where this kind of thought process happens of like, mm. okay, they're complaining that the German OP sticks out, like, you know, with the antenna. Well, mm-hmm. screw it. We'll make them all the smaller. Well, if they're smaller, yeah. they're going to be harder to spot. Okay, yeah. well, how can we make them easier to spot? And then you get the shine. Mm-hmm. Uh, granted, they have reduced it from one PT to another one. Mm-hmm. Ah, I don't know. It's, it's not game breaking for me. Yeah. But it's definitely a kind of a head scratch. Yeah, I I just think of it in terms of where originally they said they wanted the most intense, realistic World War II shooter. And like we said in our asymmetrical episode, there are certain things that we have to be willing to cave on. And like this just seems completely unnecessary to me, honestly. Yeah. I so think the sound I think the yeah. sound was a great addition I to say we're gonna give an, an audio it. cue to be able to help mm-hmm. you find it. But uh I, I, I couldn't get past this topic without uh a meme that came up uh, from actually Heidegger from WTH also been on the show. Good friend. You know, he talks and you know, we know Heidi's position, you know, yeah. <laughs> uh, last time I, I did an impersonation of Heidi. He wound up coming in chat like he got summoned. So we're not going to do that. But, uh, you know, broken garrison, steamroll resources, no frames, buggy takes, automatic t- you know, weapon spam, terrible <laughs> design. I sleep. Shot the yeah. OP and it just like real, you know, just like comes alive. And you know, I mean, but it was, it, it was funny because of all the things that developers have came out, that was probably one of the most vocal, but yeah. least impactful to the gameplay. I, it was, yeah, it was interesting from that aspect. But, and uh, I there's think a lot of it is that everyone knows that, okay, we need optimization. We need this. We need that. Like that's been going on for so long, but this was just kind of like, this was like having, you have a, you have a guy in a tuxedo and then wearing clown shoes. You know, like that's <laughs> it, it just, it's like I, I, I see what you're trying to go for, but why? Is it like the, the tuxedo t shirt, you know, like I'm yeah, here to yeah. party, like I, you know, I'm like formal, but I'm also here to party, you know, is yeah, that exactly. from a, it was really but, weird? Like, just, no, just take it away, get rid of it. Just you, you have time, you have one week, just code that thing out. We're good. No, <laughs> no, so we'll see. Granted, everything that's on the PTE is not guaranteed yet hence yeah. why you notice a lot of content creators everybody like that uh mm-hmm. we actually see mono in a, a chat right now uh coming to us on the for the late night stream mm-hmm. uh recording of this one but uh a lot of content kind of being on hold people are going to be wait and see we'll see what comes out of the pt yep. we're less than 10 days away from it right now um more Excited. more to come <laughs> exactly yep. now what is actually happening uh is the summer cup and the Summer Cup is, for those who don't know, it's hosted by 91st uh, uh, Panzer uh, community. Uh, 19 teams have formed together into 10 teams, or 19 communities have formed in together with 10 teams intended to be the, you know, summer's got a little lull, COVID restrictions are leaf- lifting, depending where you're at. Now COVID restrictions are returning. As Johnny says, I'm not going to get into that. <laughs> 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 but uh, what, what you got is another competitive event, and they've actually decided to push forward with this. We're going to go out of Update 9, guns blazing, competitive, a lot of uh, saying old St. Marie Dumont out. They're going to take a week break, and then they're coming back, and we're going right into Update 10, looking at competitive map- maps, and I'm looking forward to who chooses Kursk and Stalingrad for the competition. Uh, as far as the overall update on there, uh, you actually see Pi 104th, 116th STB. Um, if you remember the Greyhound Cup, Pi and STB were grouped up, wound up getting a co-championship uh, with 116th on that. They've now split it, gone on different teams, but both being successful. Uh, Phoenix and Exodus, Exodus is back, albeit they have uh, had a couple personnel shifts, um, but they're still up there. And then you, the French communities and the Spanish communities continue to. Uh, uh, grow, uh, get better on that. You see Raptors Hive, 38th and 91st, uh, you know, Final First Bastardo, shout out to Mosca there uh, and our friend. <laughs> so uh, what is interesting on this, you see the points is that they're doing the Swiss system. Yep. And this is something unique uh, that we haven't seen in our HL tournaments where if you win the game, you essentially just move up like as in tournament. This one, the points or the number of sectors you cap carries forward and acts as an overall squad or a score to go into seeding for a knockout round. I think this is interesting. I like it, Johnny. I know you were with me for one of these competitive matches. And uh, I mean, what, what do you, what do you, have you been able to catch any, what you saw there? What are you thinking of it? 
I think it would be really interesting to see this because as we know, the competitive scene is really, we're still trying to figure out how the best way to make things work since the game was never meant to be a competitive game. So it's really interesting to see different angles being approached. And I think that's a good thing is we need to see, okay, let's try this and see if it works. Okay. It worked great. Let's try it again. You know, keep doing these different things. Uh, you know, even smaller communities that are doing 18 V 18s, let the bigger communities know, say, tell us what, you like what you don't like all these different things we have to try all this different stuff to see yep. if it's going to work so i think it's a fantastic thing that they're doing that speaking of the 18 v 18s if you have if you're interested in those signups are still happening contact abanis from the hell let loose training camp uh they're yep. still registering those teams those could be happening after update 10 uh also i have been told that the fall seasonal is a go i'm looking forward to that that's kind of the premier, premier league um happening on these there's also actually speaking of premier league a br1 is starting to get involved uh in mm -hmm. the kind of setting up a league format too so there's a lot of a lot of things that you know competitive johnny you said isn't initially the developers didn't set up for that it's naturally mm -hmm. happening through the community we yep. love to keep abreast of it here on the show um so we'll keep update on the summer cup as this goes through uh but there's the current seedings but let's uh, let's go ahead and get to our main topic and uh to do that Let's welcome back Double Douche. Double, we had you on the Kickstarter episode that we had to uh, uh, cut off because uh, actually we were going to an organized match. But welcome back to the show, buddy. Hey, how's it? Nope. Oh, and Double. Oh, there he's back. <laughs> there we go. There oh. we go. <laughs> so. Uh, but Double, was, we brought him back. Uh, if you didn't catch our Kickstarter episode, Double was one of the original Kickstarters, been with Hell Let Loose through the entire progression, and there was probably nobody better to help us go through this and uh, talk about the experiences in Double. But let's go ahead and kind of introduce into our segment here. So uh, as you all know, or you should know if you're listening to this very niche <laughs> podcast, <laughs> it's a, uh, we make a podcast about an early access game. Yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> uh, we're really be leaving early access on June 27th, and for our last show before this early access period, we kind of wanted to look back, see what we've learned, see what happened in early access period, and trying to figure out where we're at now, what the direction is, and kind of where a, uh, Hell Let Loose is positioned into the market. Um, so, Double, do you want to go ahead and kind of kick this off and uh, kind of tell us a little bit about the Kickstarter and like kind of prior to actually early access because it wasn't just kickstarter early access uh no uh before we could do anything it was very sporadic when you got to play we just anybody who's in the early kickstarter program we just get a message randomly in the discord and like hey we're going live we're setting up the server and boom there's like one server it wasn't even full and it was boom you just go in and try it out and we just got to play and so it's very pte ish <laughs> very wow. pte ish and one time actually it was pretty funny i don't know if how many people remember this they forgot to turn it off one weekend and a bunch of us were playing on it for like a week and a half before they noticed like almost two weeks gotcha um and if you know before that we also had an alpha and beta periods of uh, in those correct yep right through then yeah the alpha period a bunch of the, like the early kickstart backer one was just for the original round of kickstart backers all that kind of stuff and then we moved in and a few more people came in and started getting a little bit more traction and they they went through a couple rounds of kickstarter i believe there okay so uh before that uh before so before it launched on steam they're actually were already doing dev briefs and kind of wetting the appetite for the community. And there was a dev brief that I want to make sure that we highlight because I think it talks a lot about that transition from the Kickstarter promises over into the game we see. And that was dev brief 13. Uh, if you haven't gotten a ch chance to check it out, definitely go down in the show, show notes. The link will be there. Read this dev brief with the hindsight of where we are two years later. And I think it gives insight. But the, the main things we're going to obviously bring here on the show is they listed out six issues. I'm going to read these verbatim because I, I really want to make sure there's some of these that are key. Uh, issue number one, player density in the alpha and beta was too low for a majority of the match. This has led to a boring experience and rarely feeling like you were impacting the full intensity of the battle. Double, 
I, did you agree with that assessment? Yes, there. Well, there's a couple things that made it like this in the beginning. One, as somebody I think was pointed out in a couple of the, there was a video on it I was watching on YouTube, but you could get all the points. All the points on the map were active at once. It was just pandemonium. But it was also like pandemonium in the sense that everybody ran around, didn't know what to do. Plus, on the only map we had, uh, St. Marie Dumont, the original map, it hasn't been touched yet. So I haven't even seen anything from the PTE. I'm excited as hell for that. Yep. Um, well, and I was going to say, if you actually look at the uh, my background here, you can see the the old map yep. where all these sectors were important, which actually brings us into uh, issue number two here. I'll go ahead and read this one out. Players who defended empty sections seldomly saw action in combat, therefore being punished for doing the quote-unquote right thing, uh, or being punished for quote-unquote doing the right thing. In addition, games were often won in a similar way to Alpha, with small groups of players, double douche, walking around the sides and cutting off the main battle. You know, and, and so I think for a lot of some of these people that talk about you know the good old days where you felt like you'd have an impact, in a certain aspect, they've shifted it more to a team-based game because one person or one group still could have an impact, but not to the level we saw in the alpha, correct, that double? Yeah, that's pretty much it. Before it was in, I think, Mon Mono and Max touched out some, on this in their little uh, interview. I got a chance to watch it. And you could just have one guy, like me, sneak around, get uh, spawn his supplied guy in off a sneaky OP, spawn the rest of the team in off this sneaky little magic garrison out of nowhere, and bam, the, everything was over. That was oh, it. It was just a domino effect from there. And don't think we won't leave this conversation without talking about ninja garrison. <laughs> <laughs> but this was this was pre. This was kind of like the well, before the ninja that, garrison was like a, a huge deal. The other thing was that contributed to that was if you look at the sides of the map. Now, if you go and play in like Saint Marie Dumont, they have these grayed out sections, and all the maps have these grayed out sections. Originally, when we played on those, that was all open. They had the whole extra four sector that uh, four bar area. Yep, and we get just a little bit of Discord lag on the other side. And you can easily just get that one guy around and sneak. Yep, yep. Oh, sorry. No worries, no worries. Uh, issue number three, which has not been fixed. Uh, server <laughs> CD servers was unappealing, and uh, confrontation was rare in low population servers. Yeah, okay, I, I, I can totally understand that. Now, like, the seeding rules, a lot of communities have those in effect. But nothing's changed with that. I mean, it's just help. But let's just move on from three, not spend any more time. Uh, number four, battles never felt large or competitive, as if you were never sure if you were fighting a full breadth of the enemy force or just one unit. And I think this goes back to where there's some, you know, the, the front line, I'm using air quotes, you know, front line concept. Um, double from your perspective, did, did you, do you see more of established front line as we went through the early access period? than we did from the alpha absolutely uh with them not having so many points on the map it was like oh the enemy's taking this one's like, okay let's just go grab these ones real quick and we'll just go meet them over here and fight it out and go through and take that sector on our way through so it wasn't very strategic it wasn't that way so yeah it, it's very sporadic i think it's a lot better now the lines get very with experienced teams especially you see uh experience when you see the teams form instinctively just a line across their defenses where they need to be their uh attack element will push off of that defensive line using them as the kind of their base of fire moving through and that line could change in an instant throughout the battle their attack gets up on an end and you start seeing the attack wrap around so i think the line shift the the shifting front lines at this state I think comes down to squad leads and people and how they play the map because it's going to be tactics. It's going to be use of terrain and like getting down to knowing the battlefield that's going to win your matches. Yep. No, map knowledge always there. Um, I, I, I will say, you know, we kind of talk about this when we talk about the introduction of red zone garrisons in update nine, just want to tease on it though, that, you know, the, the frontline concept overall um, you know, some people really do not prefer the meat grinder where you're just, you know, sending bodies over and over again. You look at certain games like um, Beyond the Wire, the grinder that was World War I. Um, people like that ability to, I think, play in the sandbox, um, but have direction in the sandbox. So I, I think this is still something that they're going to balance and control with, and they can 
been changing different attributes, uh, maybe things like garrison spawn or garrison uh, distance between building them. Um, but I, I, I definitely feel, at least coming into the game, I wasn't in this period after understanding how active sectors work and things of that nature and how to understand the map, I can see a, uh, uh, where this is into effect. Uh, the other items they brought up uh, was uh, number five, artillery tanks and other large scale abilities aren't as effective as they could be due to the breadth of the battlefield. John, Johnny, <laughs> how much do you hate artillery when you're on a point like <laughs> town outskirts, oh, West Bend? Bad. <laughs> <laughs> <can get> bad. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, and you're you're a tanker, double. I mean, you're you're a squad leader here. Uh, I think this one might have been overcorrected if I had to take a shot at it. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, no, I, I don't know. I'm kind of torn on this. I'm infantry, so yes, of course. I like the fact when I'm out there with the squad and that tiger rolls up, you just have to get that little chill down your spine and you got to figure out what the heck you're going to do about it. Mm -hmm. And when you go on, when they've cut down some of the maps, now one thing that brings me back to something I wanted to kind of get an answer on from the devs back in the beginning with the edges of the map getting cut down, they actually said they were thinking about reopening them after once um, the vehicles and stuff got into the game. Now only we only have supply trucks and tanks right now. Maybe I'm wondering, Hey, is that maybe in store as a surprise for when the half tracks come in? And cause that like uh, Max was saying already, that's going to change the battles. Really, oh, it, the half track is going to change everything if they were doing it the way they were uh, talking about it in their notes. Uh, well, and, and yeah. if you look at so, probably the point of contention, that was a on huge question I had about that because I liked a lot, a lot of the spots on Saint Marie Dumont that were real fun to fight around uh, town outskirts for one of them. It it was great when that side of the map was open. It was you had a lot more area to work with, and town outskirts was a great fun point to fight around, and you didn't really have the meat grinder that you have yeah. with it shut down. Well, and I think. If you look at the points that the community kind of cringes on the most, I mentioned West Bend, I mentioned Town Outskirts, the barn, certain things like that. Uh, granted, the barn we will not see again. Put, uh, put F in the chat for barn. We'll right. never see that point again. But <laughs> it's the points on the side because essentially you don't have the full breadth of the battlefield to maneuver around. Um, I think, you know, uh, bring, bring those sides back. But, uh, Johnny, you're a tanker. Uh, do, do you feel that as a tank now with the way, you know, having just one strong point? Because that's really what this is. This is saying going from the image behind me of mm -hmm. every sector having all three points lit up. Do you feel as a tanker that it's, you know, uh, uh, focused for you and knowing where you should be? I, I would say it's focused in the fact that we've been narrowed down to where we can and can't go. Uh, the problem with doing tanks is, I mean, essentially what Hell at Loose has forced us to do is be infantry support no matter what we're doing. And that's fine, but... Yeah, you talking about that's for, perfect. That's yeah. perfect. Don't, don't get <laughs> there, there are some of us in the tanking community that would love to make those 1200 meter shots. Um, I think that Kursk is going to help that. Um, I, I like that we are more focused into going into the specific points, but I'll say that I think that it might be too hyper focused. Uh, drawing to a game I did last night where literally three Sherman tanks ran straight into the point to cap it. <laughs> <laughs> that that one's probably a little bit too far. So yeah. maybe maybe ease on the brakes of that. Let tankers be able to flank. Because honestly, that's the only way to beat the German tanks is to is to flank them. That's it. Yeah. So well, Johnny, you you mentioned kind of the Kickstarter and mm -hmm. some of the promises made in there. I, I know there was probably a line that kind of you you kind of focused on. Yeah. And uh, you know, I got you know, uh, did we? What was that line that you kind of you had on there? They they originally said we prefer intense, terrifying, and intelligent instead of long, tedious, and boring. That was their exact quote. Yeah. So the so the question I guess they have I mean it, it is you know did abandoning their Kickstarter promise of that help fulfill another Kickstarter promise and and mm -hmm. therefore the confusion of the community. I, I think it's definitely evolved. Um, I I don't know if I would say I mean, they did essentially abandon it. Yes, but it 
it changed just like how the sense of comp in the game is changing. They had their original idea for how they wanted this game to be. And as we move forward and see what works and what can't work, that's going to change. And that's not necessarily good or bad. I would say for the most part, most of the firefights I get into are definitioned by i wouldn't say terrifying uh definition <laughs> by what their original kickstarter promise was so i mean the the application might not be the same but i think they've accomplished their main objective in making these firefights be like oh sh like like making it so that you feel like you're in world war ii um, yeah. and especially with the pte some of the firefights i've gotten into in stalingrad uh specifically being someone who is fascinated by the eastern front and has a huge amount of knowledge about the eastern front it it's incredible it's honestly incredible i've never seen another game like it so, so what I just heard is it's going to be really easy to kill Johnny if you're on Stalingrad or Curse for like the first <laughs> uh, week because he's just going to be seeing the map uh, or looking around. Now, double from Ooh, your perspective. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now, double from your perspective. I know on the Kickstarter episode, you had a lot of things, but there was also some critical aspects. Um, I mean, I kind of asked the question, do you think by trying to fulfill some of their question or some of their promises, they've actually broken other promises? <laughs> In small ways, but I understandable ways that I can see in a lot of things. Everything cut out. Yep. Nope. You're you're good. Um, in small ways, yeah, I believe that they kind of had to let some things go. Like they went on, like the full realism. They were they that was one of the things that they were kind of pumping for in the original Kickstarter. I think they've kept as much realism as possible without sacrificing the game being really fun. Cause I have never been immersed in a shooter game like this. And I don't feel like it's that Twitch shooter element where everything is all the combats forced on you in those type of games. These ones, if you're smart, you get to fight the enemy on your terms, yeah. but there, there's not very many engagements where you're really every once in a while you get ambushed. Yeah. It's just part of the game, stuff like that. But if you play smart, the majority of the engagements you can keep on your terms and play yeah. the way uh, you have to think how they would think back then to do what you have to do. Correct. So, I think I think you're granted now we're actually going to jump into the full Kickstarter sure. period, uh, but it's it's important to realize what happened in that that alpha period and that dev brief. Once again, go back and read it with the hindsight of where we're at now. I think it's going to kind of illuminate a lot of like the decisions that got there. But early access started on the 75th anniversary of D-Day. Uh, that was June 6, 2019. And we had three maps. Uh, double. I don't know how you've been along so long or been here and this motivated after pl playing on these maps so often. But yeah, Saint Marie <laughs> Dumont, you had Foy and Old Hurricane and Forest, which I'm a little, I'm a, I miss Old Hurricane. I have to be honest. I miss Old Hurricane so much. Uh, Hurricane I, was the first map that I was on, and I remember it was the Scar. I spawned in. I looked up through the Dragon Steve. I looked up the hill. There was fire. There was mud, and I was just like, "Holy crap!" This, but I, I miss it. <laughs> I have looked at every square inch of the old Hurricane Forest on my belly, and it was an amazing map. Uh, great job developing. I, the new one is great too. Uh, it it is not. It's beautiful. The map is gorgeous. It's so much harder it's to see gorgeous. people. No, just, it's, it's, it's 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 you don't call it gorgeous when you're getting shot at and you cannot tell one where the hell it's coming from. <laughs> but that's I guess that's war. So you got to deal with yeah. that. Number one thing I miss about old Hurricane is the 45 degree trees. That you can run up for, <laughs> and then you could be like deer hunting, you know, in there. And uh, when someone showed me machine, that, you see a machine gunner up there just flipping around, his legs flopping up in the air, just he's, <laughs> he's shooting never, every. <laughs> he's just planking off of a limb. Yeah, that was great. That's uh, those are the very realistic. But uh, anyway, it launched with those three maps. You had two tanks, and listen, this is gonna be uh, on or good for the um, other ones. Uh, you had the Sherman, uh, you had the M4A1, you had the Panther. Uh, granted, later afterwards they came out with a patch that added leaning. I I, I couldn't imagine yes, this game without thank leaning. God. No, no, and vaulting like back in like the early early. It was it was comical. You'd come up to a little choke point, like a fence around a bush. Somebody starts shooting at you, and you would have to run all the way. You could not jump over anything, yep. it, like anything that was over like knee high. That you it, no, it just it was bad. 
So what, hey, what vaulting else was save the game? Vaulting so, saved this game. <laughs> so what uh, what else uh, came in that patch? Because I think they changed something with the time. Correct, double. Yeah. Yo, and I really miss this. I miss two hour games. I really do. They they were amazing when you had a play an offensive intense mode. Fight. Like, oh, uh, it doesn't. <laughs> offensive can go three hours as it is. Like the way it's set up, it could go three hours. Ah. Uh, no, I like 90 minutes. Like uh, uh, two I hours, just, I miss. So you didn't so they, even know two hours would be up and be like, oh damn, I was. I wish it was longer when you had a great fight against a good team. It was awesome. You know, if you do it right the first time, it doesn't take long. Okay, that applies to other marital <laughs> aspects. Okay, but I'm no, one of the it, people that liked the longer game. I, I liked it. No, I was gonna say shorter from 120 to 90 minutes. So remember, that's a, a thing on there. And then uh, they also, I think, uh, added something to gameplay uh, as far as the aim goes. Resource nodes, yeah. Uh, double on, on that patch. The what was it? Uh, I was gonna say. Then you added like shift or steadying on the. You could actually like steady yeah. your weapon. Yeah. Um, the one thing I wish they would do in games and stop kind of adding this hold your breath mechanic type deal Be it's cool add a steady weapon feature but take that holding your breath because no experienced marksman sits there and holds her breath yeah, you're just not going to find it i was gonna say i i i, I kind of pause i don't hold my breath <laughs> but i don't inhale no I'm there's in a slight pause where you go to pull that trigger but you don't sit there and hold your breath until you're shaking yeah, fair, <laughs> fair. Yeah, fair, fair. So anyway, but so, but at least it's steady the weapon. Yes, training. no, there's a steady the weapon, the zoom little bit. I I can deal with that. You know what I mean? Yeah, sharp, kind of get that little sharpening of the eyes illusion. You know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So anyway, that was part of. So we had the early access, uh, patch number two. Then full update one came. It came with Utah Beach. Uh, added the Shermans and Luke's, and then here's what's key. Probably one of the biggest things that has just been over and Still. over said yeah is the resource <laughs> nodes and it just changed almost every single update mm -hmm. one because of the changes of not having all those resources a tied to 15 sectors on the map they added resource nodes which has been in my opinion a band-aid that they've kind of like never really healed the wound they've just kind of yeah. reapplied bandages on bandages and bandages granted some things are changing with update 10 but I, I, I don't know. I mean, resource nodes on this one. Well, let's go ahead and just talk a little bit about it. Mm -hmm. Resource nodes, they're going to be taking it to where you have an ambient resource gain, um, whether that be five per minute or 10 per minute. We'll see what the final one comes out. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's going to allow uh, basically if you're pushed back, I think it's good because it's going to allow it to where if you're the steamroll ability, uh, if you're pushed all the way back to one four, you can have um, some ability to come back. Um, but then they change around with like, OK, if you get middle point, you get to generate this much. You immediately have an advantage. I mean, and the resource nodes like right off from update one. That was just uh, just building your house on sand, in, in my opinion. Yeah. 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 The biggest heartbreaking thing about the nodes for me was when I'm out of ammo, running around trying to defend the point, And I see this munitions node with this belt of machine gun ammo sticking out of it and I can't grab it. Like it made no <laughs> sense to me. That give was me, my biggest give me thing. The yes, please. <laughs> so that was update one. Uh, update two came out about ten weeks later, and we're gonna wa watch watch these times between updates because I think mm -hmm. it's also talking about the uh, indicates the complexity of what's happened here. Update two, we added the tiger tank. Johnny, go ahead, just nails on chalkboard for the tiger tank on the maps. But five hundred ever made. Five hundred <laughs> ever made. And you picked the one that was in the movie Fury because it was cool. Come on, Max. Come on. Come on. It's call cool. me. Seriously. It's call cool. me. We will talk about this. <laughs> Johnny Gunner is going to be the historical you know, consultant for Hell and Loose. I, I, said, I will literally, I'll talk to whoever it is that their historical people are. I will do this for free because Johnny, I think, it's cool. I love this game. I it's want cool. it to look good. No, it's not. It's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so tired. anyway, Brad his shit. I'm tired. I of will. It. Done. <laughs> I will say the first time a Lux I seen in combat opening up with that little auto cannon. Oh my god! It was, was just that was German terrifying. That was yeah. just yeah. terrifying. You weren't safe anywhere. It was just it was pandemonium. <laughs> yep. Yeah.
Uh, yeah, the entire tank progression system and unlock, unlocks cosmetics. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Put those carrots out in front of uh, yep. online gamers. We'll get on yep. it. Uh, overhaul of unit unit management. Be on kick. Invite lock squads. Uh, I think that's a fun, fun, a fundamental right now. So yeah. update two overall. I think push us in the right direction for mm-hmm. fun, t- Johnny. For fun. Mm. <laughs> Making fun of maybe <laughs> the one the one thing that killed during that progression system on lo- the first time you got progression, I made it to level fifty like three times that I remember and was reset to level one. Here's oh, the each small, time. smallest like, violin through. playing the world's saddest song for you. Double. <laughs> I know, I know. I, every time, we, every time, like double like talks about his rank, and like not every time, it'd be like every tenth time, depending on how much he's drank, what time of the night. I would be higher if I didn't reset my ranks. But anyway, uh, update three, Johnny. I believe this is when you got into was- the game. Yeah, I uh, I came in uh, around October of 2019, so about okay. six weeks after Update 2. So what do you um, remember about Update 3? Yeah, yeah, we had Omaha Beach, we had Offensive, which Inchon hates with a passion, except on <laughs> Omaha Beach, yep. and then the UI overhaul, which was fantastic. Oh, you wouldn't, <laughs> you wouldn't have liked it the first when they first released the Offensive. It was quite literally like it was the Germans spawned right up on the trenches. People with a 1911 on the beach, I don't see what the problem <laughs> <laughs> hey, that was fun. You're right. That was fun. But it made trying to get off the beach impossible because the Germans literally spawned about right in position on the trenches and you were like saving Private Ryan, taking hey. bullets as soon as them ramps dropped and they saw hey, people they, in there. You were they done. Were must be the first wave to now. Now in the game were the second wave. The first wave got wiped out. 90 percent casualties. So they're like, oh, shit, that don't work. Let's go back and we'll make <laughs> the second wave and we'll unscrew the situation up so i i, I have no problem here yeah. i'm yeah, not I, the problem i have with tiger tank uh, <laughs> offensive mode we've already seen changes coming in the pte mm-hmm. i i don't even want to spend time on it i don't want to spend time on offensive mode in game i don't want to spend all time oh, on no, offensive you, mode in this talk show tiger tank, then we get this <laughs> i was gonna say and here's the benefit about you know digi's not here but you know we're just gonna move on so offensive yeah. mode Di- uh johnny what came after update four yeah, we had update four in December of 2019, so that's nine weeks now after update three, and we had the map, the classic map, Samariglis. Yeah, very important to the D-Day campaign, and then loadout unlocks, so new new weapons, new equipment. You know, instead of just using the exact same thing over and over and having a monotonous gameplay, now you can actually earn these different things that you know different types of supply crates or ammunition versus uh explosive ammo or whichever which i think is really important because prior to that the hell let loose really felt like just a nicer graphic postscriptum post you don't really get any upgrades or anything and hell let loose stood out with this so i thought that was fantastic that's and something hence, i always saw lack so <laughs> and here we start and at this point, the point mm-hmm. there wasn't the automatic spam that we see now these were kind of mm-hmm. clear side so update four overall thumbs up mm-hmm. um we'll kind of get through on these update five i think for many people was either the peak point of where you know they kind of saw the game or was the beginning of the end from the realism <laughs> standpoint? So you got Purple Heart Up Lane, uh, I think universally agreed as one of the most hated maps. Uh, yeah. Gretzen, we love you. This is a hated map because you made it too accurate. The soldiers there <laughs> hated fighting there. We hate playing on there, but it's a slugfest. If you're a tanker, you can like it. Sound mm-hmm. overhaul, I think sounds, we talked about it on the tier list. Sounds are doing good. Nope. Jumbo Sherman's come in. And asymmetrical balance kind of goes out the window a little bit, yeah. you know. Uh, they granted, we got the tiger conversation, but now you have the shirt, the jumbos coming in, and then highlight. Were 76s on? No, there was no such thing as a jumbo 76 <laughs> with that. They, there was like 200 made, 70 of them saw combat. So to have the specifically the uh, Bastone tank, whatever it was called, having that. <laughs> in there you know i can't remember what its name was but it, Johnny, it's fun photo and stop oh, being a fun cool sucker <laughs> stop sucking the fun out of my game I like that picture let's put that in the game <laughs> <laughs> no and then but the big one here ping and map marker system i think for me and this is really where i think you start to see a little bit of that split is yeah. the the ability to say you know hey like user interface throw stuff on maps uh, some people want more. They want to be able to draw yeah. on the map. They want to be able to put more. Other people say, I want a minimal UI. I want to be able to focus on voice communications. 
update five, I think is really, and John, double correct me if I'm wrong here. Is this, I mean, is this where you kind of saw the community split? Cause this is when I came on board for purple heart. Um, I don't know about splitting. So, I mean, I guess a lot of the old rumblings, group, go rumblings. Let's let's. Yeah. I mean, I guess there was some, some rumblings from maybe some people here and there, but this is honestly where the game really started growing that I seen. Yeah. Honest, I started seeing more new faces all the time. The server well, list, it was so easy to find a game. Never, well, I, like, I came in, so that makes a lot sense. Of, these updates. Uh, <laughs> of course, it was all, yeah, it was all you, of course. Well, and see, here's, here's the other thing. Check this February update, February 2020, 10 weeks after update four. COVID is just hitting. COVID's yep. just coming in. So let's not discredit yep. that and yep. a lot of these places coming in. But uh, update six goes... And then you have, oh, they've got a, a, sorry, update six. That was update five, blah, blah, blah. Okay, we're losing track here. Update five, 10 weeks afterwards. Mm -hmm. Update six, Hill 400. I think cosmetically a beautiful map. Yeah. Some people love it, hate it. The forest mm -hmm. battle. Commander roll got new abilities. Mm -hmm. um, I that got exactly what they were. I, um, think, I think one, the recon plane. If yes, I think came you're out right. In this. You're right. The recon yeah. flame. Uh, um, I still have gripes about this. By the way, I I don't understand. Right. My biggest thing is, especially on a forest, like this is a dense forest we're talking about going through. There is a reason why there was a unit in World War II specifically designated, and all they did all day long was move these giant blow up truck and tank looking things around to make it look like we were moving regiments and stuff through to full aerial reconnaissance because you couldn't see that well. You couldn't yep. tell there was this little dude just hiding over here and a whole bunch of stuff like that. So have you seen like, what's, I have you seen what's com Have you seen what's coming with update ten? Is now everybody nope. is going to be able to see the recon dots? That I'm sorry, I I don't like this. This just <laughs> I don't. Every time I see the recon plane go up, all I hear in my head is enemy recon plane detected. From <laughs> <laughs> my my, my pet peeve. <laughs> my pet peeve is commanders. <laughs> that tell me everything they're doing it's i'm gonna put a recon plane up recon planes coming guys check your maps okay only three of those well, things you don't have to worry about it it's See, in the feed boom, boom well boom, that's in that right there's another one of my problems with it it's the commander i think used to be a lot more useful because they would have to a squad would mark something and then the commander would have to okay here we go and they relay that information like command should do to make sure they get to the proper people and then they would go through and they kept bringing that back and cutting it back and now this is the commanders can almost sit there quietly and just not Co say let's, anything now let's be honest and i think this actually came i forgot on it was a dos albrook stream in the chat uh hmm. commander is a glorified garrison management position yeah. and now to say yeah. you're a good commander or you should go commander is almost like an insult because you're right it it, it pulled more and more stuff away things of that yeah. nature as we like, progress through this let command command let them work the truth the, uh, the infantry units are going to run autonomously work for the most the part troops. but they need a little direction mm -hmm. yeah let the command help them out relay information that's relevant for each people so bravo's thing isn't cluttered up by 20 marks from other people that aren't relevant to him yep and so, he okay, gets so relevant information and goes so let's get to the big one the big one where if you talk to the veterans if there was rumblings before with the ping system update seven turned into to some people, a dumpster fire. To other people, like at least a spark or kindling, of you will. Uh, you got Karen Tan FPS <laughs> dropped on Karen Tan. There's a reason why you don't see competitive matches on Karen Tan. Yeah. I don't have it. I love the map. I think it's great, but we don't play on it. Um, TTP FE animations overhaul, great. So whatever. Omaha Foy overhaul is great. Whatever. Uh, no more red zone garrisons. And, it, and to offset that, they got the airheads, additional commander ability. But yep. this is where we saw the red zone garrison, ninja, whatever you say, uh, get squashed by the developers. Yep. And start problems. yeah, and start this with Flash. Go back to that Dev Brief 13. Mm -hmm. You know, having that in mind, they saw from there. Uh, double, I remember the time. I mean, red zone garrisons were a way of life in Update 6. Yeah. Yeah, they yeah. were a way of life that 
all the way up till then. That's all matches were. It's everybody just, all right, just hold on defense until I can get it. Give me, give me five minutes. Mm -hmm. Give me five minutes. I'll be right in position. Just have everybody ready. And it would be a mass redeploy. Everybody at once just hits a redeploy button and you spawn the entire team and go. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I always say, Ch Chad over here, once again, I love a live show because I'll let you know when they miss something, uh, even at what, 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 what time are you recording this right now? 1045 p.m. Uh, yeah. So the TTP or uh, third person, first person animation overhauls, that's where you also got the more fluid vaulty and the mobility coming things of that nature. Yeah. Uh, but the Red Zone Quality Garrisons. Life. Exactly. The Red Zone Garrisons, you know, had a couple different breakdowns. We talked about this in the previous episode, but the fact that it acted as a teleporter. Yeah. It was hard to detect, and it was easy to set up. Um, all mm -hmm. depends what added to the ninja things. Now you got the hundred meters. Came back and update mine. We'll get to that here in a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think for update seven, I mean, uh, Heidegger, Wild Bill, yeah. they talked about, hey, as you're going through this, what if you uncovered the perfect game mode at update six and just stopped? Yeah, I, you know, and that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a, it's an interesting thought because you had more freedom, you had more sandbox, yeah. you had more choices. Um, speaking of choices, Johnny, uh, update night brought update eight brought some additional toys for us, additional choices. Yeah, we had the Hurtgen Forest overhaul. We got the new trucks, which was really cool. Fortifications, satchel charges, the hitbox changes, which have kind of been uh, overturned a little bit. Yeah, that, 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 that back when you had like the Iron Man shield of just like your 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 uh, forearms forearms block yeah. every shot shot yeah, exactly. shot. I, I, think, I think of Wonder Woman when she's running across during the World War One scene, just ping, just blocking those bullets, and yep. then the bullet penetration, which has, I don't know, it, I, I I still have people uh, complaining about bullet penetration, so I don't really know if I'm uninformed about what really happened with that, or if it got put on a back burner, or I, look, that. Here's, here's my thing. If they knew they had bullet penetration, we would mm -hmm. see a video of them highlighting bullet penetration. Yeah. Bullet yeah. penetration is still continuously one of these things they t they talk about. I think it's great mm. that they're seeking out. I think it's great that they're getting mm. on it, but they haven't highlighted it with a view yeah. uh, video, which confirms a lot of the community's aspect that there is no bullet penetration yeah. at a consistent enough level to make yeah. it impactful in the game. Mm -hmm. I believe it's there, just not yeah. consistent. Yeah, because yeah, I've had guys yeah. who I've I've put shots through like uh, wood fencing and gotten hits, and then other times I haven't. So what what what's don't, going on, Dev? Let, don't get know. me started on the thirty odd six rated wooden yeah. fences of yeah, all this like crazy. We're, we're definitely, I, I think that's a really cool point to go into, but we don't have the information to go into it. So yeah, where are we at? Where well, we and then go back to, I think it was patch 15 that just recently <clears throat> came out after 59, where they changed around the hedge grows that stops tank shells. It stops oh, rockets. Oh, uh, the whole man. penetration thing to me is just a soft spot. It's just soft, yeah. squishy, gelatin-like yeah. substance that needs to be done. But let's, let's, let's reminisce here a little bit. Do you remember prior to update eight when the match started mm -hmm. and you ran with your fellow comrades, comrades? <laughs> and you, well, it was great though because you immediately figured out what your team was like. There was bantering. Yeah. There was music yeah, being played. <laughs> Sorry, say that again, Johnny. I said you get the news of the day. You know, all the old guys at the coffee shop. Everyone talking about how their day's been and what's yeah. going on. You could identify and mute any toxic players. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> get all the other so you can hear yourself think yeah yep. get them out of there right away before you even got to the main point uh you yep. got to tell uh, such uh, great dad jokes of uh what's the difference between a zippo no. and a hippo anybody don't coming with it. me on this one no, don't do this please no it's, oh, it's happening right. another drink okay one's oh, a lot <laughs> uh one's an animal and the other one's a little lighter <laughs> Okay, or well, no, one's heavy and the other one's a little lighter. All right, moving on. So, but no, I I think supply trucks, transport trucks, I really and go back to double what you were talking about when they shut down those sides. I think this was a huge thing they added as far as the mobility and being able to move around the map. But the fortifications, for the most part, I think were kind of blah, with the exception of when it comes to update nine and what they did with the barbed wire changes. The fortifications, I loved the idea when they first implemented them. Like you said, they're a little lackluster. A couple things were a hit. And one thing I really don't understand why we got rid of the sandbags. 
can we have those back, please? Because they were so useful. They were amazing. They were one of the best fortifications you could have. The instant sandbags, just like a good place for cover. You use them on the sides of the AT guns. Your AT gun might last longer than 30 seconds or less. Yeah. So, but the rest of the fort, they're great when they're implemented. I think the point now from where we were with fortifications is amazing. I like the new implementations of stuff. Yeah. So. I think fortifications are good. I've seen them used well and sporadically. I've seen them yeah, used yeah. well, definitely on offensive mode. I think it definitely added a dynamic on yeah. offensive mode. But what's not highlighted on there, uh, satchel charges. I think satchel yeah. charges, uh, to I me, it's that. just turned into like one of the giddy moments of the game. I love seeing satchel <laughs> charges go off. I love the call out. I love the miss. Uh, the the fuck ups. Let's just call them what they are. Where you're like, get away, get away, and you get the new players like, I'm gonna clear the building. <laughs> Blueberry juice everywhere. I love the satchel. I don't know. I don't know. Some people are. I guess we're saying they're kind of useless or something. I don't. I think they lack imagination because that is some of the most fun gameplay I've had. Is running in there with the squad and being even just a support guy, watching two of our guys going out. Yeah. Hunt, we're running around one night hunting tanks with the things. Mm-hmm. Two satchel put them on the thing they come reload grab two more place them on them and we all run bye bye yeah. tiger <laughs> all right i agree great so let's for time's sakes uh update nine came out return of red zone garrisons like, yep. with a bunch of restrictions on them okay. meta changes blah 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 barbara changes things of this nature but let's let's uh-huh. kind of uh sat you know let's go ahead and talk a little bit about what kind of where this progression once again go back to alpha beta mm-hmm. dev brief 13 the progression here, as you see, update ones, updates oh, going through here. A uh, point that I didn't make right there is that the time between uh, update seven and update uh, eight was 20 weeks. Time between update eight and update nine was 16 weeks, where pre- previously they were around 10 or less weeks. So obviously telling the complexity, they change one thing, it impacts other things, they make a mistake, uh, mm-hmm. company comes out with a patch afterwards. But... I, I think what you get to is, um, you know, we, we, we get to these certain friction points with the community and these frustrations uh, with the player base and the developers. Probably one of the biggest one is the gameplay meta and this kind of ever changing involvement with the spawns. Just don't mm-hmm. fuck with the spawns anymore. Yeah. Like yeah. S- spawning is inherently fun. It's a rebirth. <laughs> you know, what am I going to do with this life? Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> you yeah. know, but a next life will be better. And, you know, it's just an <laughs> eternal hope that the more you change with people's hopes and their spawns, uh, the, I mean, if we, if we go back to like the shine. Just don't, don't, don't like spawning. <laughs> spawning is interesting, but you can see this. Okay. You had no red, you had red zone garrisons, then you had no red zone garrisons. You had uh, garrison spawns between 150 meters down to 100 meters to 200. I think that whiplash and that tug of war is is at a heart a lot of the frustrations. Yeah. Um, I'll go back to Dev Brief 107 that came out between that, where they talk about once again a more telegraphed front line. So yeah. that phrase telegraphing comes in. They want the front line, but they want it to be visible, especially with newer players. Um. I, I, got, I got on here. Um, let's see if I got to uh, which one it was. I don't got it just up right now. But kind of this fluid mobility, this front line. Um, I, I, I could see them trying to get to it, but I think ultimately we're locked into the grid system that yeah. we have. And that is inherently going to be the mechanic front line. Double, you talked about how squad leaders develop a front line within that grid system uh, using their squads and OPs. But, um, I, I, you know, I, I think that's kind of where we're, where we're seeing a lot of this development coming through the early access period. Uh, double, I know you've ta- you, you got an eye on the competitive scene and like or, you know, um, the 360 degree. You want to talk a little bit about that? Well, I mean, I think yet yeah, the battlefield and they, I think uh, Max talked about this a little bit with uh, Mono on his uh, interview. It's they focused on making the maps. Yes, we have the hard point that we have to the hold and whatnot. 
but they've made it to where you're going to have to hold the terrain surrounding it and keep the enemy out of these areas to be able to actually control that point or they're just going to run right over you every time. So it's they're trying, which they've done actually pretty good with this, trying to force the people to play together and play towards the way that will help the meta of the game instead of just making it all for yourselves by at first for the longest time we didn't even tell know like how many individual kills really we had they finally brought out the stats i was like, oh wow i can check <laughs> yep, <laughs> stuff yep. like that so uh, and johnny i think one of the biggest things kind of going through this early access period where you hear a lot of people talk about the competitive or sorry not the competitive but the historical we want to bring a real life battlefield experience uh historical accuracy versus gameplay is obviously something they struggle with yeah and i mean like i've said and i'll continue to say it's all about balancing it's it's a balancing act that they're trying to do and i definitely commend the devs for their efforts with it because i mean not every person is going to have a bachelor's or master in world war ii history um it's it's trying to figure out okay we want a heavy tank in the game what are we going to do well the tiger is iconic so let's put it in there was it used yes absolutely was it at this battle no but it'll work i i get it um you know there there are certain things that me as a historian i'd like to see different which i'm totally open ears to helping with uh like i said max call me still haven't accepted my friend request wtf dude Anyways, his rates are um, very reasonable <laughs> no, I, that's why the, I will do this for free. I, this is I know how the devs have this as a labor of love. Um, I totally see that. I commend that. And I would love to be part of it. But no, um, I get how it's a balancing act. There definitely needs to be accuracy because there are a lot of people like me who are nitpicking at that. So give them what they want to a certain extent where they need to understand, OK, we still have to sell the game. At the end of the day, if the game doesn't sell, it does. Who gives a shit if it's accurate? Because no one's going to be on it. We yeah. have to make that balancing act. And I I am <laughs> I know how to do that. I, I get that. I understand what can be done and what has to be done i totally get that agreed, but agreed. seriously grenade launchers <laughs> no shotguns <laughs> <laughs> and get rid of tigers and is2s well I mean, to, to that aspect the tiger is2s jumbo 76 to your point being you know, less rare getting bored back to the kind of historical roots uh mm -hmm. and another thing i think you get kind of walk away from this or you mm -hmm. know the struggles of going through this early access period is what is the hardcore tactical shooter versus yeah. something approachable, digestible by a new player base? Yeah. Um, I think if we look at all this, there's really three key design developments. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think Max and his team have taken this uh, mm -hmm. or uh, echoed through a lot of their actions and a lot of their briefings. One, mm -hmm. player density. They want to keep a high player density yep. um, throughout these engagements. Uh, two, they want to make sure the time to engagement is low. You go back to the double you mentioned postscriptum. That was one of the biggest oh. things for me. I, I just, I, 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 the issues they talked about in Dev Brief 13 is the issues I had with postscriptum that I Minecraft didn't Minecraft with guns. We'll call it yeah, what yeah. it is. Minecraft <laughs> with guns. Yeah. It, it, it didn't, once I came into this game, granted it was update, uh, six with Purple Heart Lane right before that. I did not. I came into that and I was like, this is completely different than Purple Heart or sorry, yeah. um, Postscriptum. Um, I'm getting that that time in there. It, it feels like there's action around me. Um, the final design point I think we've kind of got is that map control is valued over kills or strong point or, you know, you know thing of that nature. A lot of things are still focused to me around map control, albeit the execution or implementation of all those mechanics haven't mm -hmm. always been on mark yeah um but uh yeah let's go ahead and double uh, for time's sakes uh i, I know you, you know johnny you talked about the balancing aspect double <laughs> you want to kind of chime in a little bit on the balancing aspect um for the trying to balance it, it is very tough and i think they're they're doing pretty well with it and they're trying to make more things odd uh, I, I guess not to cover some stuff that Max did. I, they already talked they're going to eliminate some of the uh, assault rifles and whatnot. So the automatics are getting a little bit limited to what we have now. So that's going to go back to a little bit how it was before and a little bit more towards the realism side like you're uh, talking about, Johnny. And mm -hmm. so it's not going to be everybody running around with a submachine gun or an assault rifle. Like You pretty much can outfit most of the squad now with an automatic. Mm -hmm. But um, 
in terms of the other stuff, uh, something I think has to be done with breaking up the tedium of the middle point sometimes because you get that rush and sometimes it's cool. You get a little tug of war over that one middle point, but then there's such a huge disadvantage to the other team for not getting that. And I actually, at one point in John, you had a great idea on that. The, um, adding a second point, not bringing back all the points in each sector, but just in the middle, having a second middle point. So it breaks up the tedium a little bit of that tug of war in the beginning and allows you to have to play a little bit more map control itself for the middle ground of the map. It's not going to happen. My idea is not going to happen at this point, but I, I like I'm it. Just I appreciate it. No, no, I was yeah. just say I think it was would be something as a step towards trying to break up that tedium of the tug of war right there because it just feels a little off sometimes. And the, they're already reworking the uh, nodes, so the uh, the team isn't going to be at such a huge disadvantage for not having that middle sector. So that's good. So that's one way they've worked around that, and that's so I guess that's how they're fixing it. Yep, yep. Well, I, I wanted I want to go ahead and kind of uh, we're, we're, we're wrapping this up here. I'll, uh, I want to first give out a shout out to Sunseeker, who really helped us with a lot of this research uh, and getting this uh, uh, episode uh, out. Uh, there's a few points I want to go ahead and highlight that he wanted to make sure we get um, is kind of the hard ass hardcore aspect of this is that it's almost like a catch 22 um, that uh, of a hard or a hardcore game. Is a hard game. A hardcore game requires patience, per, uh, persistence, and disposable time to master, uh, which means you have a smaller subset of gamers on that. It's not necessarily going to be a larger gaming lo- gamer like um, commu- uh, community like Battlefield or Call of Duty. Um, but the people that have the persistence and patience don't necessarily have the time. A little bit older gamers, which I think you see a lot about in this community, which is one reason why this community is so great. Yeah. Um, and ultimately, you have this balancing act from the devs. Johnny, you talked about this. W, you talked about this. If you try to make it more hardcore, you're going to be a smaller, uh, smaller player base. Um, it might have longer legi- uh, longevity with that base. Right. But if you make it a little bit more casual, you're going to have a larger player base. It might be a little bit more fickle. You might be a little bit more, you know, uh, contract stain opinions, um, which Max talks about. Once again, I will encourage highly Mono's interview. Uh, it was truly a player interview, HL player viewer, a Max asking great questions. I think he got some great answers from there. But Max talks about how he's trying to handle all these different aspects. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I think at the end of the day here and double Johnny weigh in on this. I think what we're left with after the early access period is that we still have a very kind of niche game that is a entry level hardcore tactical shooter yeah. um we we're, we're not we're not straight mill sim we're not straight arcade it's still a niche yeah. um but they will need to and i was gonna say they'll still need to generate income they still need to make this a bu- business aspect um it'll be interesting to see what they got going forward after this mm-hmm. absolutely but, so yeah. yeah, and I mean, honestly, I think the best way to keep moving forward is to keep giving people what they want, you know, um, constantly, obviously, keep up with the updates, uh, give us more tools with the PTE, with uh, give server owners more tools so we can play around with things, uh, learn what we like, what we don't like. And then for the historical people out there, I'd say the best thing is to keep bringing us maps. Yes, yeah. maps, maps of yep. the lifeblood. Yes, and My- maps and uh, people. A lot of people want like down the line. Hopefully, we get to see some uh, Pacific theater action. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah, Agreed. that'd Different be theater, Italian theater for the win. <laughs> right? Well, oh, that would be great. Well, guys, we we gotta finish up the show. I'm I'm, I'm out of whiskey here, but double. Uh, <laughs> I I can't let you go with giving you out your final comments and uh, uh, your your take overall on the early access period and where we're going. Um. Overall, I'm still. It's still the only first person shooter game I play. I come home and I might play a little bit of something other like Seven Days to Die or some other game or Star Citizen. But at the end of the day, I'm always back on Hell at Loose. So I think they're going in the right direction with a few gripes. Please fix the M1 carbine. I I don't understand. The Gewehr 43 is just still godly, and the M1 carbine is now just it's like a high point. It's like down here that way low. So I don't know what they did, but they should fix that, please. One question I do want an answer on. I would like to know if somewhere uh, we could get a um, bullet damage readout. And I want to know if you're taking the bullet velocity and whatnot off of the 
uh, box for the actual like ammunition, like a nine millimeter velocity, because the submachine guns, it still takes as many rounds from a submachine gun as it does from a pistol to kill somebody. You add a longer barrel, like a submachine gun barrel with the same round and the round travels faster and causes more damage at higher velocity. So I, the submachine guns seem a little weak to me is basically what I'm saying. I think they might need to adjust something along the way. I don't know if they took that into account. I'd like to see the damage values on all those. Maybe, maybe, maybe you know, I was going to say, maybe it's a, uh, a, a conscious decision to nerf it a little bit just to make uh, the automatic weapons a little less uh, potent, uh, but point still mm-hmm. made. Uh, double, uh, I appreciate you being back on the show. Uh, Grim Geist was also on our Kickstarter episode. Uh, shout out to him also. Uh, appreciate the Kickstarters. You guys have been here for the journey. You guys helped us uh, get to this point. And to everybody, hell of a journey. Yeah, hell of a journey. Li- and I love my little American uh, helmet with the leaves on it. It's amazing. Everybody <laughs> always like, how do I get that helmet? And it's like, <laughs> you can't. It's me. It's mine. You can't have this. <laughs> indeed, indeed. So uh, with with that, let's uh, let's let's say sayonara to the early access and uh, look forward to uh, the game release. Obviously, it's going to continue to develop. They're going to continue to go forward um, with it. But uh, that that wraps up uh, early access as far as hell. Let's talk, and we may never talk of it again. No, we're going to talk about it again. Let's Appreciate you having me back, guys. It was great. Thanks, thanks, Double. All right. So before we get out of here, though, uh, we we got to talk. There was this. We got to have a little fun here, D- Johnny. There was All a right, meme. Oh, oh, I got my sync wrong here. There was a <laughs> meme posted by. Uh, did you did you wind up seeing this on Reddit? Yes, I did see it. Yeah. Okay, so tell us a little bit about it. Well, uh, it, it seems like somebody had a unconventional way of entering a window. And while it may look similar to how a uh, ventrilo or not a ventriloquist, what do you call those people? The, the contortionist? contortionist? Yes, that's it. A contortionist may go through a window. I don't think that's how most people do. <laughs> but um, yeah, a very, uh, a very shining example of how to uh, enter a building, I suppose you could say. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, <laughs> yeah, so uh, Cannon Fodder Bob from 82nd AD, great community, great of the uh, Hell Let Loose overall community, caught this ragdoll effect. I want to know first off. I actually think is this a second floor? We got to ask Cannon on this one. Is this a second know. floor building that this guy got shot up through and then impaled into the window? But it's classic. And then the, the there has been multiple memes made of this screenshot. Perhaps the best one was taken from The Shining. <laughs> Yo, here's You're Johnny. <laughs> like he to me, <laughs> to me, you can make an entire community just dedicated off of this screenshot meme, right? Uh, but this this was actually by Tricky Eddie of Reddit. Uh, needless to say, the community had fun with it. Uh, it was great to go, but uh, yeah, we, it was, we couldn't we couldn't end the show with. Uh, Without yeah. at least showing that highlight and the fun that does come out of Hell Let Lose. Yeah. But uh, let's go ahead and wrap this up. Uh, Johnny, do you got any final comments at your first full episode of sitting in? <laughs> Yeah, I uh, one thanks again for uh, for everything you're doing, Digi. We can't wait to have you back. I hope you're safe and everything. Um, to the devs, uh, you're doing great. Honestly, you're doing a fantastic job. You've made a beautiful game that has sparked an absolutely amazing community that I am completely thankful to be a part of. To the community get ready hell at loose is going to be amazing we're going to have a great time in 2020 or 2021 i guess we're not talking about 2020 uh, we're gonna have a great time in 2021 with the russian front um i look forward to everything that they're going to be coming out with and i will be looking at it with a magnifying glass so like i said <laughs> max call me accept my friend request on discord you know you want to <laughs> <laughs> historical accuracy friend request uh yeah, no yeah, that's exactly. You ever, you ever just talk to someone about the historical accuracy of the Moise and the Gein? No? Well, you do now. <laughs> <laughs> yep. uh, before we sign off, uh, if you're catching this episode on YouTube, you'll notice we are actually now being hosted uh, off of Esprit de Corps Gaming versus Hell at Loose uh, uh, training camp. I want to say that this uh, the training camp was an amazing place to be part of. A, a lot of great opportunities, uh, but myself and Digi decided to kind of head off into our own ventures, do something a little bit different. I wish the training camp nothing uh, but uh, support. I know they're going to continue to grow. 
Um, and looking forward to seeing what they got coming up. Also look forward to seeing what Digi and myself, uh, along with a few others, are doing with their Spring of Core Gaming. But I want to kind of address the little elephant in the room. I, ins- I, I hope the community, if you're following the show, continues to support both those communities as we look forward. Um, but talking about the community, uh, one of the competitive broadcasts I did, uh, Heidegger actually had a little fun, a little fun okay. with this meme here. So we're going to go ahead and sign out with uh, me talking about how tanks are used with their coaxial machine guns to support an infantry push. And uh, we'll see you on next episode of Hell Let's Talk. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>